What would you think of a country which imprisoned millions of people without charges or trial and subjected them to intense, prolonged psychological programming in order to train them to be submissive and obedient and easily controlled by those in power? One country where such brainwashing techniques are still practiced is called the United States, and the indoctrination camps are called school. In every country and every culture, most people accept whatever is familiar and do whatever they see everyone else doing. Only very rarely do people question whether the way things are is the way things should be. For millennia, slavery was assumed to be natural and proper, physical abuse of women was socially accepted, and it was expected for churches to use torture and violence to spread their beliefs. Thankfully, in much of the world, oppression based on race, religion, or gender has decreased dramatically. But there is still one group of people that is subjected to oppression with the approval of the majority, namely children. In the Western world, most people accept school as we know it, as a legitimate and necessary institution. Every year, many millions of parents surrender their young children into the custody of institutions to undergo intense behavioral training. The practice is commonplace and familiar, but take a moment to consider the situation objectively. In the name of compulsory education, a young child is taken away from his family and friends and put in an institution, in many cases a government-run institution, where he is under the constant surveillance and control of authority figures who are often complete strangers. The child is forced to give up his freedom and privacy and give up control of his own time and energy. While being assimilated into a strictly scheduled and regimented program, the child quickly learns that there are two distinct classes of people, controllers and subjects, and that he is a subject. He learns that his worth and his goodness are measured and graded primarily by how well he follows orders. He learns that he must go where he is told to go and do what he is told to do and that it is never his place to challenge or question the rules imposed upon him. He is put into a group, often a group of strangers, and forced to conform with the crowd in word and deed. Where the group goes, what the group does, and even what the group thinks about is decided by the controllers. Individual thought is replaced by groupthink. Self-determination is replaced by collective action. Not collective action resulting from individuals voluntarily choosing to work together for some common goal, but collective action resulting from an authoritarian institution forcing its agenda onto subjects who have no choice in the matter. Because institutionalizing children is commonplace and familiar, some may think it extreme to call it oppression. But consider how you would feel if the powers that be treated you the way many millions of children are treated every day. You are required to surrender yourself into the custody of an institution without trial or even the accusation that you did anything wrong. While in school, you can be punished without proof that you did anything wrong, and whole groups can be punished for what one individual has done. The institution decides who you may and who you must associate with, segregating its subjects by age and sometimes by gender and or academic performance. If you do not do the work assigned to you, you are punished. You may speak only when the controllers say so and only about what they tell you to speak about. You may be punished for criticizing the controllers. If you are questioned, you may be punished if you do not answer. Your person and belongings may be subjected to arbitrary searches. It cannot help but have an impact on one's view of the world and one's sense of right and wrong for someone to spend his most formative years essentially being incarcerated. If that term sounds extreme, consider a few of the ways in which school resembles prison. In the name of law, you are confined to a building for a period of time along with many other inmates. Whether it's called a prison count or taking attendance, you are regularly counted to make sure no inmate is missing. If one is, government agents may try to find the escapee and bring him in. Even on the inside, where you can be and when is strictly regimented. Loud bells tell you when you must move to somewhere else. For a little time each day, you're allowed to go out to the prison yard for recess. But of course, you're still not allowed to leave the grounds. If you misbehave, you will be put in special housing or detention. And inmates often spend time watching the clock, eagerly awaiting the time when they are set free. Being stuck in such conditions, day after day, with no means of escape, often leads to frustration, depression, even violence. In this setting, where many strangers are forced to be together for a prolonged period of time, it is natural for bullying to occur. 
and for cliques or gangs to form, as those being held captive look for any way to feel powerful in a situation where they know that their lives are not their own. Of course, different schools have very different environments, some almost indistinguishable from violent prisons, others very safe and clean with friendly teachers who genuinely care about their students. But in almost all schools, children are learning things that have nothing to do with the subjects of their classes. For example, the setting of an authority figure lecturing a class trains children to look to an authority to tell them what is true and to tell them what is worth knowing, instead of thinking of truth as something the individual should seek and discover on his own. Students also learn that it is not up to them to solve problems, create solutions, or settle disputes, but that they should instead always look to an authority figure for such things. They learn that they are not in charge of their own lives, that obedience is their only duty, and that the people in charge will take care of everything else. What is often called education is, in reality, a perfect scale model of totalitarianism. And to spend one's most formative years in such an environment trains one to become accustomed to being treated this way and to think of that situation as normal and acceptable. The purely artificial setting gives the students no practice, no experience, no training for living life as free individuals in charge of their own lives, but gives them plenty of practice, experience, and training for living life as the subjects of an authoritarian regime. And this is not coincidence. The entire Western education system was modeled after the Prussian indoctrination system, and those who designed that system openly admitted that their purpose was to create a population of easily controlled subjects who would blindly obey the ruling class. As one of the main architects of the Prussian system explained, the goal was to program students in such a way that they would have no will of their own, but would want only whatever those in control told them to want. This is what the American education system is modeled after and sometimes the indoctrination is downright flagrant. Every day, millions of American school children who are too young to even understand the words they are saying are required to robotically swear undying allegiance to an authoritarian government and the symbol which represents it. For a little perspective, imagine the same exact scenario, but with the youth being forced to swear allegiance to a different flag and a different republic. Any child who refuses to say the pledge will likely be subjected to ridicule and punishment by his fellow students and by the authority figures. As a result of their prolonged ritualistic training, most Americans still do not want to see the Pledge of Allegiance for what it really is, nationalistic brainwashing. Incidentally, the pledge was written by Francis Bellamy, a nationalist and socialist who pushed to have a flag in every classroom where children could swear allegiance to the Republic while performing what became known as the Bellamy Salute. Americans may be quick to recognize the mind control tactics which foreign regimes have used to train their youth to feel love and loyalty to their rulers, but may be reluctant to recognize that many of the same repetitive rituals, the same methods of indoctrination and behavioral training are still being used in America today under the guise of education. This is not to say that American teachers are all in on some malicious plot to enslave future generations. Many teachers mean well and are doing what they can inside the framework of the system to impart knowledge to their students, and many make an effort to teach students to think for themselves. But in this setting of controllers and subjects, commanders and obeyers, students cannot help but learn subservience and mental and emotional dependency. One of the most thorough descriptions of what Western education really teaches can be found in the works of John Taylor Gatto, who, after receiving the New York City Teacher of the Year Award three times and receiving the New York State Teacher of the Year Award, became one of the most outspoken critics of the current American education system. Although American schooling has become far less openly authoritarian than it was in prior generations, the fundamental nature of the Prussian system remains. However kind and well-intentioned teachers are today, and however gentle and pleasant the control has become, the system still teaches human beings to be compliant, docile, easily controlled subjects who will conform to whatever agenda those in power oppose upon them. Over time, students may forget most of their academic lessons, language, mathematics, history, and so on, but most of them will, for the rest of their lives, remain experts at blindly obeying authority. One of the most revealing and disturbing illustrations of this can be seen in the psychology experiments conducted by Dr. Stanley Milgram, which clearly demonstrated that nearly two-thirds of Americans, regardless of income level, education level, sex, race, or religion, will inflict severe pain or death on an innocent stranger simply because an authority figure told them to. 
Why should this be surprising when most Americans, when they were most impressionable and just beginning to figure out life, were forced into an environment where they were constantly rewarded with approval, praise, good grades, and prizes for doing whatever authority told them to, but punished with disapproval, criticism, bad grades, and deprivations for not doing as they were told? Obedience training works. As Dr. Milgram himself put it, quote, with numbing regularity, good people were seen to knuckle under the demands of authority and perform actions that were callous and severe. A substantial proportion of people do what they are told to do, irrespective of the content of the act and without limitations of conscience, so long as they perceive that the command comes from a legitimate authority. End quote. Tyranny cannot exist where the people understand and value individual freedom, but where people have been trained to blindly obey authority, tyranny thrives. The fact that today most Americans quietly and passively submit to being detained, questioned, searched, taxed, monitored, regulated, and otherwise controlled and extorted by their own government shows just how effective the Prussian system really is at training human beings to think and act like slaves. Fortunately, there are many individuals and organizations now moving away from traditional authoritarian indoctrination, such as the Waldorf model of schooling, much of the growing homeschooling movement, and the ultimate departure from authoritarian indoctrination known as unschooling. People may argue about which methods best provide children with the academic knowledge to prepare them for life, but given human history, there's actually a far more important question. Are we raising a society of people who will not only tolerate oppression, but will themselves inflict oppression on others if and when a perceived authority tells them to? Right now, the answer to that question is yes, we are. For that answer to change, Parents need to start rethinking what is familiar and traditional when it comes to child rearing and education and need to start considering the possibility that the road to creating a free, peaceful, and just society does not start with incarcerating all the children in authoritarian indoctrination camps.